So we've seen already an intuitive way to understand this equation in terms of distances between the point 2 and the point 7, and we've got now an intuition as to what this relation means. But now we want to use some of the properties that we know about inequalities and some of the operations that we know that we can apply to inequalities to solve this in a slightly different way. Okay? In fact, we're going to be solving this now in a somewhat more rigorous way than the sort of graphical intuition that we built up before. Okay? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to use a particular um, relation that we had about inequalities, and that is that for A, B, and C, all real numbers, if A is less than B and C is greater than 0, then A, C is less than B, C. Okay? So what that tells us is that we can take an inequality like this and we can multiply it by any number greater than 0 and this will hold. Okay? We've got to be a little bit careful. If C is equal to 0, then the inequality would not hold. It would be an equality. It would be just 0 equals 0. So we've got to be a little bit careful here that C is, right, is greater than, strictly greater than 0. Okay? So the question will be, we want to take an inequality like that and transform it into an inequality like that. But to do so, we're actually going to multiply by not just one C, we're going to find two different values of C to multiply this by. Okay? So what are we going to choose? Okay. The first thing that we're, that we're going to do is we're going to choose our C to be x minus 7. Okay? Now indeed, C is equal, is greater than 0 for x not equal to 7. If x is equal to 7, then C is 0. So we have to be a little bit careful that when we're multiplying by this, x is never equal to 7. Okay? However, we look at this equation and we see that if x is equal to 7, well then that's 0 on the, on the right, and this is 5 on the left, this certainly isn't satisfied for x equals 7. So in fact we never want to have x equal to 7, so we're fine. So let's multiply by x minus 7. Multiply both sides here. What do we get? We get x minus 2 times x minus 7 is less than x minus 7 squared. Okay, that's fine. So that doesn't seem to have helped us very much. In fact, it's given us now a more complicated equation than we started off with. But now let's take another choice for C. Okay? Now let's take the choice for C. Now let's choose C equals x minus 2. Okay? Now in this case, indeed, we can have C greater than 0 for x not equal to 2. However, in this case, if we multiply both sides of this by x minus 2 when x is 2, indeed we're going to get 0 equals 0. So we've got to be a little bit careful here. Okay? So now, now let's multiply by this, but let's say that this can be any x. Okay? That sounds a bit strange because that means that c can be equal to 0. Okay? However, what that's going to do is that's going to turn this less than sign into a less than or equal to sign. Let's see that. I'm just going to write it down first and then we can explain it. So we multiply it both sides by x minus 2. So that's just going to give us x minus 2 squared here. And now I'm going to write is less than or equal to x minus 7, x minus 2. Okay? Now the equality only holds when x is equal to 2. Okay? In fact, that's not going to matter for what we have in just a moment. Okay? So we know that this statement here leads to two more statements, one here and one here. So I'm just going to write both of them down independently. Okay? So if this is true, then these two statements also hold. That x minus 2 squared is less than or equal to x minus 7 times x minus 2. And we have that, I'm going to write this in the same way, x minus 7, x minus 2, is less than x minus 7 squared. Okay. This one is simply that. This one 
is simply that. Okay. Now we've taken one relation, we've multiplied, by, multiplied it by two different things, and we've got two relations which look like this. Okay. What can we do with that? Well, in fact, we can use a, um, a relationship between inequalities that says for, I'm going to use different numbers now, or different letters this time, for P, Q, R, all real numbers, if P is less than or equal to Q, and Q is less than R, then P is less than R. Okay? So we actually have this. We have one thing is less than another thing, but that other thing, the Q is the same on both sides here, is less than the third thing, which is our R there. And so this is the statement that we want. Okay, we want P less than R. So our P here, looks like this, our P is this, our Q is this, and our R is this. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take these two relations and write it as a single relation like this. Okay, so what's that going to give us? Well, that's going to give us that x minus 2 squared is less than x minus 7 squared. Okay. You kind of knew this already. You knew that you could square both sides of this, but we have to be a little bit careful. Okay? It's not always going to be the case that if you square something, the inequality relation holds. The only time it is true is when both of those things are greater than 0. Okay. If they're not greater than zero, then you end up multiplying by negative numbers, and multiplying by negative numbers can switch the sign of the inequality. Okay. Now we use the property that the absolute value of x minus 2 all squared is simply x minus 2 squared. This then is equal to x minus 7 squared. We can expand this out, and we end up with a very simple relation, which we can solve. Okay, let's do that. We have x squared minus 4x plus 4 is less than x squared minus 14x plus 49. Okay. We then use the, um, uh, the properties of inequalities that we know to add the same thing to both sides. The x squared is going to disappear. We're going to end up with a 10x on, uh, on one side. Uh, no, I like. Uh, what have we got? Minus 4x. We take the 4 over to the other side, that's going to give us 45, but yes, uh, plus 14x, less than 45, okay. which indeed gives us the same answer as before, that x is less than 9 over 2. Okay. If you skip, missed any of the steps, just work through them yourself. Um, but what I really wanted to show here was that we can show by certain properties of inequalities that this does indeed hold. The reason that we can square both sides of this relation comes from the fundamental properties of inequalities that we saw before. Okay, very good. So next time we're going to use a separate way, to, another way altogether to solve this, and that's going to be by defining it in terms, in terms of piecewise functions. Okay, very good. I will leave it there for now. Thanks.